Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Better Product Solutions Podcast, bringing you Erica Reprezova, Global Technology Manager, Electronic Materials at Sun Chemical. We're going to unpack all things human-machine interface, various different types, market drivers, and design considerations. So without further ado, bringing you Erica at Sun Chemical, and here is some good insights on human-machine interface. Thanks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Better Product Solutions Podcast. Steve Davis from TapeCon here, and really excited to have Erica Rebrazova from Sun Chemical on the podcast. Uh, TapeCon's been uh, doing business with Sun Chemical for a while now, and I'm really excited to have her on because we're going to talk all things, well, a lot, of, a lot of chemistry, but then particularly some HMI and um, some sensors. So, but I'll uh, I'll introduce Erica the best I can. Obviously, I mentioned her title, Global Technology Manager. But Erica, and it's funny today I, I was actually on a workforce development panel earlier this morning, so it's kind of in it's fresh in my mind of just um, people's career pathways and kind of how they how they get to where they are. So maybe if you could maybe uh, kick us off with uh, how you got even got into this field. Um, obviously, you've been advanced through Sun Chemical, but uh, clearly starting with a chemistry-based background. So I'd be, I'd love for you to start off, maybe giving us some background on yourself. Uh, thanks, Steve, and hi everyone. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really hard to say for sure, but um, some of my really child, childhood memories go back to the times where when my mom worked in the QC lab for this bottling company. And I visited here, I visited her lab um, sometimes, you know, when I was little. So um, one of the drinks they did there was uh, Pepsi. And I remember that they would test syrup for, for density and viscosity. And, you know, with my childish eyes, I was just totally amazed um, by the lab setting, laboratory equipment, and people in white coats. That was like super cool to me, right? They, they kind of uh, looked like superheroes. So, so I don't know. I mean, maybe that, that's really a vivid memory to this day. Um, and, um, you know, I didn't go on to the food chemistry path or, or anything like that, but I certainly have a lot of lab environment, lab equipment, and people in white coats in my life today. So I don't know if, had, if that has to do anything with it, but, but it certainly um, kind of resonates with me um, uh, when you ask this question. I feel like I should start asking this question on for every podcast guest because it's, it, I mean, our industry is kind of unique where it's like, I don't know, there, there, there's various backgrounds and sometimes I meet people who never even, like they never even knew about the industry and then they spend, all of a sudden they blink and 25 years go by and they're like in the space of, of, of chemistry or printing or something like that. So well, what, I when like I was in, I'm going to yeah, ask that more often. <laughs> when I was in high school, I wanted to be a dentist. So that's certainly far from where I ended up, but uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm not a dentist. <laughs> so, but I mean, so, so, so Sun Chemical, obviously you, you made your way uh, to Sun Chemical. Uh, you've got a large responsibility there. Uh, what's your role at Sun Chemical? Or if you want to maybe give a quick um, commercial on kind of Sun Chemical as a company, anything mm -hmm. you want to share there? Right. So I, I've been with Sun Chemical for about nine years now. Um, uh, before that, I was in academia for, for a large part of my life, really. Um, I started off a, at Slovak University of Technology in Bratislava, and then I moved to U.S. And, and I did my grad school and some academic work at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And it really was at Western Michigan where I was introduced to flexible and, and printed electronic uh, uh, printed out trans applications and materials and ink development. So um, uh, from, from there, I moved to Sun and, you know, started out as a scientist and then eventually, you know, became um, an R&D manager. And in my current role, um, I manage global R&D team, so research and development for electronic materials division. And uh, we develop materials, uh, technologies, and solutions for multiple electronics applications, such as the you know solder mask for PCB manufacturing, so a more traditional PCB type of um, inks. Um, and uh, but we also do, of course, inks for printed electronics, for biosensors, etchant plating resist for solar industry, and things like that. So uh, qu quite a lot of electronic materials coverage there or technologies. Yeah, I feel like there's such a broad like skunk works of 
of what's happening with printed electronics. And it's tough to pare down maybe what's what's being experimented on or in the lab versus what's truly been commercialized and 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 is actually out in front of us and is and is successful in in, in the world, I guess, with print electronics. Mm-hmm. Where do you see what areas are you seeing the most, I guess, adoption or success rate with printed electronics? Well, I, you know, as you know, I mean, printed electronics is not necessarily new. It has a new ring to it, uh, uh, starting calling it printed electronics or now flexible hybrid electronics. You know, uh, we try to market things different ways, you know, as they become more popular or less popular and want to make it, make them more popular. But in any case, printed electronics uh, have already proven that they can offer lower cost and lower environmental impact when compared to copper circuits in some applications. And I say in some applications because um, they they can compete or replace copper circuits in in all applications or in a lot of electronics applications, right? I mean, it is no secret that, you know, of course, copper circuits perform better when it comes to higher speed circuits and and higher complexity circuits, right? Uh, But when it comes to lower power, lower complexity circuits, um, um, printed electronics is a great choice. Um, You know, it's additive processing, it's lower environmental impact, and it's cheaper. You know, we use PET, which is cheaper than polyimide. So th- there are multiple things that really printed electronics already actually uh, succeeded to replace to some extent um, a, a copper flex, for example. Cop- yeah, definitely copper flex. Now, a good example of that would be, uh, you know, printed switch applications. Uh, for human uh, machine interface, uh, but there are other applications where, of course, uh, printed electronics are successful. Printed heaters, various printed sensors, um, EL, for example, electroluminescence, um, uh, glucose sensor uh, sensors, and medical sensors, biosensors. That's certainly an area um, that sees a lot of growth. Uh, wellness and healthcare applications, especially point of care. Uh, applications. They they fit very well. Printed electronics fit very well um, uh, with these markets um, because of the ability to make circuits on many different substrates. You're not limited to um, either rigid FR4 or a polyimide. Mm-hmm. You can print on urethane, you can pr- print on PET, you can print on paper, you can print on many different substrates and you use additive processing. So you're more environmentally friendly and potentially more sustainable. Yeah, it seems like the, the material set always seems to be why people are coming to us, like an older design mm-hmm. that's on a polyimid. Like how many times is it a design that's on polyimid and they're looking to reduce cost and, and the most easiest way or one, one of the most blatant ways to do that is to substitute out the polyimid for a lower cost you know, polymer, like mm-hmm. the polycarbonate or polyester or something like that. So right. on HMI, um, to unpack that, dig a little deeper on HMI, what is HMI like from your perspective? And what are the various types of HMI options that are out there that Sun Chemical is providing some of the raw materials in for? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, HMI, human machine interface, or I've seen it, I've seen also a term MMI, which is the man machine interface uh, uh, that's being used. But but HMI is probably most common. Um, it really covers a broad spectrum of devices. It, it could be from super simple to super uh, sophisticated type of devices, right? Uh, but conceptually, it is it is anything that enable enables us as humans to interact. Uh, with the machine or to control a machine uh, or to get a machine to do what we want to do or or get information things like that um so from printed electronics perspective really hmi um as it real or hmi market as it relates to printed electronics uh is is uh, the fact that most hmi devices use printed switch or electrical switches right and some of them can be screen printed so, so I think that's where kind of printed electronics uh, plays uh, within the HMI uh, space. And when I say electronic switches, I'm talking about uh, membrane types, membrane switches, capacitor switches. Uh, there may be resistor switches, piezo switches, but really it's the membrane switch and the cap switch that are most common, most commonly screen printed. Yeah, and I, I I still don't have the secret recipe of what people are actually Googling on these things because every time I feel like I talk to different people and everyone has a different 
of slightly different vernacular of all of the different types, you know, mm -hmm. across across that spectrum. You know what I mean? Like the uh, the uh, capacitive touch, the capacitive touch versus, and I'd like to talk more about transparent capacitive mm -hmm. touch because mm -hmm. you didn't mention that yet. Can you mm -hmm. can you maybe shed a little bit more light on um, in the particular capacitive touch sensor where transparent is really starting to emerge? Uh, right, well, so maybe it's already emerged. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's already here. Yeah, well, it, to some extent, it did. Yeah, it is breaking through now. You can see it more and more uh, nowadays than than before. But uh, maybe let's start from the beginning. You know, the membrane touch switch versus capacitive touch, touch switch, right? So uh, many people and and you guys make them, right? You you make membrane switches. Um, they're really widely used in appliance or industrial controls, right? Or you know many other other types. Um, um, and and you know those are uh, uh, pretty much um, uh, based on the uh, a metal membrane, and they're pretty much on and off. You know, circuit. You you press the membrane, it causes the circuit, activates the switch, right? Um, in terms of capacitive type uh, type of a uh, 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 printed switch. Uh, you know, they're very highly responsive. They have very minimal pressure requirement. They really base, the principle is to have an electrode, uh, which is part of the, the printed switch. And then the uh, the other electrode is the human finger, which is conductive. So as, uh, you come closer to the capacitive switch and um, they work on the principle of detecting change in capacitance. And that change in, in capacitance is registered by the by the controller, by the, by the chip. Um, and then it's translated to an on and off type of, uh, um, you know, switch uh, 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 action. So when it comes to um, transparent capacitive switches, there are certain advantages that transparent cap switches can can offer. Uh, or overall, you know, maybe it would be good to talk about why would somebody choose capacitive switch uh, uh, versus the membrane switch. Yeah. And, and I think that you know there there are several key advantages. I think that uh, one of them is is certainly elegance and kind of like a seamless overlay, um, easy cleaning. So you don't have that much topography, or it's really seamless topography, um, and it provides unique backlighting solutions. So you don't have to have a separate window um, because you can't backlight a membrane switch with the metal dome. You have to have kind of like a separate area that has an indicator and a window, right? You you can you know uh, use that that as an indicator, but not necessarily kind of in a nice, elegant, hidden way as you could do with the transparent um, transparent cap switch, where you can actually backlight the actual icon or 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 a button. Yeah, um, I'm assuming design preferences has have a lot to do with it. I mean, just, right. just the ad, the advent of the smartphone, you know, came out touch, and it just seems, from a consumer preference standpoint, um, you know, 25 years ago, it just you just you didn't maybe the adoption wasn't there. People maybe um, didn't feel as comfortable with it. But mm -hmm. you know, I was going to ask you about gloves too, like how you know what what are, what are some of the things if you put on gloves, how that might impact a design consideration too, but you'd think that the, just the consumer behavior alone, um, you know, is one of the reasons that this it's becoming so much more popular, this capacitive uh, touch and transparent capacitive touch. And automotive is a big, a big driver, right? I mean, there's a lot happening in automotive. Right. So automotive is certainly showing more and more adaptation of capacitors, which is in the interior of the of the vehicles. And I mean, they went from um, uh, from, a, you know, a button PCB type of uh, switches to printed cap switches, you know, so um, and they certainly are loving the idea of having a transparent cap switch where you can have hidden icons, you know, um, 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 that to lit or hidden unto lit um, type of uh, features. Very elegant, it's very distinguished um, and it's very unique, right? So um, and you have a wide range of uh, cosmetic options, including either colors or text uh, textures or lighting. And, and I mean, you know, today's consumers are extremely demanding 
Um, they want uniqueness, they want uh, a coolness factor. Um, and you could do that with uh, with with cap switch. Um, you know, one other attractive uh, uh, capacitive switch type of uh, integration or 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 uh, manufacturing is, of course, in mold electronics. I mean, mm -hmm. you can not only have that cap switch seamless type of surface, but you can start. Uh, you know, incorporating uh, uh, nice curves, elegant, you know, elegant, you know, elegant designs, um, uh, wheels um, or sliders and things like that, which you can do with, with you know, with other technologies. Yeah, and because when you get into the mold electronics, now you're starting to actually, you know, around plastic molds, you can actually mm -hmm. form to an actual molded shape, right? So you right. can form that printed layer and then injection mm. plastic injection mold right into the plastic right and that's right. what you're referring to so so it's it's really one of the ways to incorporate or or integrate the cap switch within a device you know you can either um um, you can either use a adhesive bonded type of foil um or you um, to to a label uh, or you can adhesive bond it to a IMD uh, already, you know, injection molded plastic part, um, or you can integrate it within the um, the injection molded plastic part using the IME process. So it's really a way of um, uh, integration of that cap switch within um, the application or, you know, or a device, um, or there is a compression fit where you don't need to use a, a OCA or, or PSA to adhere the label. So it really, there are different ways of integrate cap switches. Mm -hmm. So if you're a product manager, you know, and it doesn't have to be an automotive company that you're a product manager for, but really anything. I mean, you've got you've got all these different HMI options. What are some of the design considerations? I know you've already hit on a lot of them, but in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, standards, product considerations, because these things mm -hmm. have to eventually withstand, you know, end use environments and, and whatnot. So any um, insight onto at least what, what you're seeing or testing in the lab that's going to help them at least understand what's going to hold up when they're going through the decision-making process of, mm -hmm. of an HMI solution for their product? Right. I mean, so, yeah, because there are so many options and some are more mature than others, some are more preferred than others, some, some are more, you know, maybe validated or more comfortable uh, for the manufacturers or designers to implement. Um, so it really depends on uh, how uh, risk averse uh, the industry is which you can imagine some may be less risk averse than others. Automotive is certainly not, you know, taking leaps at the time, right? Uh, uh, but I, I think like if we really start from the beginning of, of, you know, design considerations, of course you gotta, you know, which type of switch works best, uh, works best for, for the particular application. Um, you know, what is the size of the part? How many buttons, wheel sliders you have on the part, you know, on the, on the control panel? Is it a hybrid approach where you have maybe uh, cap switches around the actual touch panel display, you know? so. Really, there you know, there's endless uh, possibilities of of uh, of designs and integration. But from the material standpoint, you know, um, of course, you got to look at the size of the part and then w how many how many buttons you have or sliders and and um, and knobs and things like that, because that will determine how fine you need to print. You know, how many traces or how many layers how dense of a circuit or how, how many layers you need to print for the circuit. So you need to, of course, look at uh, printability of the inks and the conductivity of the inks. Can they deliver what I need? You know, either high density interconnects or they need to deliver um, high reliability uh, multi-layer circuit, right? Um, and then, of course, if you go with the transparent type of uh, capacitive switches, which uh, uh, right now, I mean, there is quite a bit of development in that area. Um, on a commercial level, uh, PDOT based capacitive switches are uh, already in the market. Uh, however, you know, there is a development in, you know, alternative conductive inks, um, such as CNTs or, you know, or other types, you know, films or inks, you know, silver nanowires and things like that, which, you know, present, pre they present 
mm, they may present some challenges, but they do also deliver uh, a very good, uh, a very good performance or or reliability as compared to PDA, for example. But PDA-based uh, transparent uh, capacitors, which is are already in the market, and you know, so if you go with that, you got to consider uh, some of the ch uh, uh, you know more challenging things like uh, hygroscopic nature of PDA P uh, PSS. So you know, you need to make sure you protect that layer, that conductive electrode, well, um, so that it's stable and it's reliable over the course of the lifetime for the device uh, operation. Uh, but we, I mean, we as a, as a ink vendor, you know, we offer solution, we try to offer complete solution for the stack. So, you know, silver ink, um, dielectric ink, carbon ink, uh, PDOT ink, as well as the overprint, you know, inks for protecting the PDOT. Um, uh, we also um, look at alternatives to make conductive electrodes, such as super fine line screen printing or high resolution sc screen printing for transparent electrodes in the form of a metal mesh. So we have quite a bit of activity there. Um, um, so, uh, you know, collaboration with um, uh, carbon nanotube film companies such as Chasm Technologies and Kanatu, you know, that's another, you know, type of um, avenue one may take when designing uh, uh, capacitor switches, transparent capacitor switches. Yeah, I was just uh, over the weekend, a buddy of mine got a, a new pool, so I was over there. And of course, the equipment's out, you know, the heater the pump and he went with like a salt water mm. type solution of course when you're in our industry i just go straight to just looking at some of the hmi on some of these things and it was all it was all cap touch you know yeah. and i guess i was expecting um more mechanical membrane switch touch because it was maybe a durable outdoor application but i mean really uh these it really there's really not much of a comparison anymore with the way that how robust these designs can be right yeah, and there's been just so much advancement. I'm no expert in it, but there's been just so much advancement in the in the cap um, uh, capacitive touch technologies and and the hardware and the then the IC that you need to um, isolate the noise or work in the moist or or wet environment. You know that it really comes down to yeah the preference and then the um, the advantages. I mean. Some of the other advantages I didn't mention uh, before is that, you know, there are no moving parts in the cap switch, right? It's purely capacitance and it's purely that change in capacitance that, that, that you know, makes the switch to operate, right? So there are no moving parts in the in the membrane switch. You you have the membrane, right? So that can fatigue as well as the film itself, right? By all the um, all the actuation and all that. But there there's really no moving parts in the cap switch. Um, and as I said, the advancement made it, advancements in the in the the cap switch or cap chips. Um, uh, really enables it to sense through glass or thick plastic overlays or in wet environment and things like that. So you can really bring that um, that switch as close as you need to to uh, um, um, uh, to the fingertips, really. And you can make that um, that surface or that actual touch interface or touch surface um, resistance to harsh chemicals. Uh, you can make it antibacterial or antiviral nowadays, right? That that you kind of want that, right? Yeah. Um, so so anyway, or protect from contamination. And I think that you know that those are some of the benefits that. Um, that really gives the cap touch advantage. Yeah, it's funny, you know, or not funny, but with the whole COVID thing, you know, cleanability of surface, all of a sudden, you know, how, how smooth that surface is does matter now, right? right. But, I mean, just so many different yeah. considerations. And I mean, I, you answer so many questions on the podcast, but I'm sure a lot of people um, are, you know, just generated even more questions. But the point is, mm. is just gather all the information and then, yeah. and uh, steer food. the right way through a design, right? Yeah, food for thought for sure. Um, yeah. Good. Well, I mean, I, that's all I had. I mean, I, I think that Eric, it's like just a nice big broad overview of the HMI options. Really appreciate all the insights. And I, I'm, I think a lot of people are going to get 
a lot of education on this, just understanding the difference because it's not going away. The technology is continuing to evolve. I know that Sun Chemicals right in yourself are right in the middle of of, of what's today and, and what's coming. So thanks for being on the podcast. I guess my question to you is, did you want to uh, say anything else to close before we kind of wrap it up on this HMI-centered exploration podcast? No, I mean, it, it's been fun. It's been my pleasure to talk to you and, um, you know, having the opportunity to just kind of you know, get on a podcast. I think it's my probably first podcast in my life. But yeah, I've I've been interviewed many times, but th this is certainly a new experience. And I wish we could we could have done this in person. You know, it would have been uh, uh, really good. But hopefully, those times are sh you know soon coming. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. All yeah. right. Well, thanks, Erica, and I uh, really appreciate it. So okay. thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Okay. Cheers. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Better Products Podcast is about educating product teams about new materials and new technologies, all in the custom material converting and printed electronic space to help them design and build better products. So in this podcast, I'm hoping to give wide ranging conversations with various people throughout the industry and just bring a lot of good content to the table. So if you're interested in learning more about the industry, materials, processes, how to improve uh, products if you're on a product team or just general know-how of what the heck is going on in this industry, then subscribe to the podcast and get ready for some more really good episodes as I bring in some great guests. Thanks.